In this lesson, we will look at a few special kinds of motion. Let's start with the simplest one, staying at rest. Of course, this means the position doesn't change, the displacement is zero, and the velocity and acceleration stay zero as well. The next kind is constant velocity motion. Since the velocity includes speed and direction, this means the object must be moving at a constant speed and in the same direction, which means uh, along a straight line. First, see if you can figure out what these graphs are like for constant velocity motion. Because the average acceleration is delta V over delta T. Constant velocity, velocity doesn't change, delta V is zero. That means the average acceleration is zero. Acceleration will be zero the entire time because the velocity doesn't change. So velocity doesn't change, that means the velocity stays the same value the entire time. If the velocity is positive, the graph is like this. And the position versus time graph will, like, will be like this. This x0 or x0 or x0 represents the initial position. We usually use either x0, x0 or x sub i for the initial position. This graph tells you that the position is changing at a constant rate, which is the same as the constant velocity because velocity is the rate at which the position changes. Or you can also look at this, the slope of this graph, the position versus time graph, is the velocity. Constant velocity means the constant slope, constant positive velocity, constant positive slope. So you can also have a constant velocity that's a constant zero. In that case, your position has a constant zero slope. The position doesn't change because the velocity is zero. Your velocity can also be a negative constant. If it's a negative constant, your slope will be a negative constant. It's for equation because the average velocity, by definition, it is the delta x over delta t. That means the displacement is average velocity times time because it's constant velocity, that means the average velocity is the same as the velocity at any moment. So you can just write delta x is a v times t. And this is the equation we use for constant velocity motion. Of course, this is nothing new. You already know this very well because you know that if a car is traveling at 55 miles per hour for two hours, 55 times two will give you the distance traveled 110 miles. In many books, instead of writing the delta x, we write the final position minus the initial position. Of course, that's the definition for delta x, so of course it's just the same thing. And uh, a lot of times, instead of writing the sub f for the final position, we just write x for the final position because uh, the final position does not really have to be the position at the end of the motion. It can be just the position at any moment after the motion starts. And uh, most of the time in those books they also write the XO for the initial position. So what you may see is that X minus XO equals to V times T. The next kind of motion is constant acceleration motion. See if you can figure out what these graphs should be like. For constant acceleration motion, your acceleration can be a positive constant, a zero constant, or a negative constant. If your acceleration is a positive constant, that means your velocity versus time graph would have a positive slope because the slope of the velocity versus time graph is the acceleration. Positive constant acceleration means positive constant slope. Now depending on whether your initial velocity is a positive zero or a negative value, your graph can be any of these. If your acceleration is positive, that means your position versus time graph would be an upward curve. 
it can be an upward curve like this like this or like that if your acceleration is negative constant that means your velocity versus time graph should have a negative constant slope which means that the graph will be something like this depending on the initial velocity and that means that your position versus time graph should be some sort of a downward curve so it can be a downward curve like this like this or like that if your acceleration is a constant zero that just means that you have constant velocity motion constant acceleration motion is more complicated so we will have a few equations to use we will derive these equations one at a time the first equation is based on the definition for average acceleration which is delta v over delta t because the acceleration is the same the entire time the average acceleration is the same as the acceleration at any moment so we don't have to bother to write that bar on the top and the delta v is the final value minus the initial value for the final value we're not going to write the sub f anymore and the initial value we're going to write sub o or sub zero and then the delta t delta t also is going to be the final value minus the initial value and because most of the time we just start timing the event at the very beginning so the initial time is zero so instead of writing the delta t we can just write t for it so this is our first equation for constant acceleration motion in many books people would have multiplied by t on both sides and then solve for v which means v equals to vo plus at so a lot of times this is the format we use they're the same thing anyway this tells you that the final velocity equals to the initial velocity plus a times t acceleration is the rate at which velocity changes when you multiply the rate at which something changes by the time you get the total change so this is the change in velocity if you add the velocity you have at the beginning to the change you get what you have at the end the next two equations can be derived from the velocity versus time graph I'm going to make it easier by having a positive initial velocity and a positive constant acceleration I'll let you plot the graph first the initial velocity is a positive the constant acceleration is also a positive number which means the slope of the velocity versus time graph is a constant positive number so the graph will be like that this means the displacement of this motion would be which part of the graph the area of the graph so we'll have to find the area of this trapezoid shape let's say the event goes on for time t and that's the initial velocity this will be the final velocity the area can be chopped into two parts the rectangle and the triangle so the area will be the area of the rectangle plus the area of the triangle the area of the rectangle is the height times the base the height is vo the base is t the area of the triangle is the one half height times the base the height of the triangle is uh, the difference between final velocity and initial velocity the difference the change in velocity is the acceleration times time the rate at which the velocity changes times the time so the height of the triangle is at when the base of the triangle is t so this gives you this equation vot plus one half at squared gives you the displacement
That's another equation we'll be using. Again, in many books, instead of writing the delta x, they write final position minus the initial position. The final position is just x, the initial position is xo. The next equation is also about the displacement. Now this time we're going to use the definition for average velocity. Average velocity is the displacement divided by the time, which means the displacement is the average velocity times time. The average velocity of a motion means uh, if you have another object that travels at the same average velocity the entire time at a constant velocity, the displacement of that second object will be the same as the displacement of the first object. So if I draw it like this, the average velocity, if the velocity is a constant, the same as the average velocity of the first object the entire time. The second object would cover the exact same displacement as the first object. Means these two motions would cover the same area underneath because the area is the displacement. So this area of the trapezoid should equal to the area of this rectangle, which means uh, if I cut this off of the trapezoid, I should be able to fill it in right over here exactly. That means these two, they must be congruent triangles, which means that the average velocity must fall exactly at the midpoint between the final velocity and the initial velocity, which means that the average velocity is the average of the initial and the final velocities. This is our next equation.